and welcome tonight. Former Governor of Lagos State, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, lays out his vision for Nigeria as he clinches All Progressives' Congress presidential ticket with a resounding victory. You also see highlights, the twists and turns and other intrigues that played out before Bola Tinubu's emergence as APC flag bearer. And Ghanaian President Nana Kufuado challenges top elites in West Africa to support regional integration in Africa. Business news tonight, crude oil prices jump to 13-week high as U.S. demand for gasoline continues to rise. On sports news tonight, Minister of Youth and Sports Development receives head coach of the Super Eagles, Joseph Pacero, asked him to make the Super Eagles a strong force on the continent again. From the nation's capital, African Democratic Congress, New Nigeria People's Party, Young Progressives Party and the Zenith Labour Party choose their presidential candidates for the 2023 election. National news from London. Italy is now warning that millions of people could die of hunger unless Russia frees up Ukraine's ports on the Black Sea. Inching towards reality, that's how former Lagos State Governor Shuaji Bola Tinubu must be feeling right now after clinching the ticket of the All Progressives Congress at a special convention held at the Eagle Square Abuja today. He won the election by a landslide after defeating the Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, the former Minister of Transport. Mr. Rotimi Amechi and the President of Senate, Ahmed Lawan. Mr. Tinubu polled 1,271 votes to emerge winner.
And as anticipated, members of the All Progressives Congress APC have diverse opinions on the outcome of the party's presidential primary. While his supporters are hopeful that this is the first victory on the path to securing the presidential election in 2023, others say there is need to reconcile aggrieved party members. Our correspondent Linda Kibre reports. Cheers and shouts of jubilation by party members at the announcement of Mr. Bola Tinubu as the winner of the All Progressives Congress presidential primaries. The joy is palpable for supporters of Mr. Tinubu after a nerve-wracking race which saw him contest for the presidential ticket with 14 aspirants. By all standards of a democracy, this was a, a fair process. We are here today to elect the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let me tell you something about Asuaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu. There is no politician what is salt in this country that has not benefited at one point or the other from who Ahmed Bola Tinubu is to the democracy of this country. I'm happy because the candidate I'm supporting is likely, is likely, is likely to emerge our flag bearer come 2023. Nevertheless, some party members are mindful of a need to mend bridges among aggrieved party members whose preferred aspirants did not emerge as a presidential flag bearer. I wouldn't say I'm happy because my candidate didn't um, make it, but again, it's a family I'll affair. Now it's for us to see how we can now go back and strategize to see how we can win the general election. Now we've chosen the candidate, but the important thing is, is transparency, and everybody can see. So it's not behind the scene. If it's behind the scene, it makes it difficult. But everybody has expressed their democratic processes, and we can see what has happened. So mending fences is easier because it's a simple process. Assessing the APC presidential primary, an observer of the process is worried about the role of money in the primary and its implication in the conduct of the 2023 general elections. We're playing with fire. It is really sad and unfortunate that money politics is still at the center of our democracy from the expression of interest form and nomination form you know to engage in delegates to consultation and all the outreaches that was done by you know major political parties and major aspirants it is really sad and unfortunate and and why i say we're playing with fire is the fact that if this continue it means that we'll still deal with the scourge of vote buying and vote selling mr lawal also wants political parties to pay more attention to the quality of delegates most governors in all the political parties hijacked the process and the system so when you look at the quality of the people or the, the very few people who decided who became flag bearers a lot of them are not well informed they're not exposed a lot of them are not educated and this also tells you that there's a big gap in our politics and democracy with the conclusion of primaries by some political parties in adherence to the deadline by electoral body INEC for the submission of candidates the race towards the 2023 general elections has intensified. Linda Kibi, Channels Television News. Today, party loyalists and supporters in their numbers trooping to the Abuja residence of the APC presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, in Asuko Road to congratulate the former Lagos state governor. However, in Lagos, the picture is different. Uh, his home along Bordelon Road, Ikoyi, when Channel's television visited, had just security patrol vehicle at both sides of the building. Ashiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinubu is perhaps the most talked about politician right now in Nigeria after his victory at the APC presidential primary. But who is this man, popularly called the Jagaban? Our next report highlights Mr. Tinubu's political journey and his road to victory at the Eagle Square. Our correspondent, Jeffrey Uzono, reports. An accountant turned political gladiator, sometimes referred to as a master of the long-term game, who started his political career in 1992 under the Social Democratic Party, SDP. There is no denying that Asiwaju Bala Ahmed Tinubu has come a long way. 
1992, Mr. Tinubu was elected to represent Lagos West Senatorial District in a short-lived Third Republic following a military coup led by General Sani Abacha. Prior to that coup, the results of the June 12, 1993 presidential elections were annulled, and Asiwa Jubala Tinubu later went into exile, where he became a founding member of the pro-democracy National Democratic Coalition, NADECO, that mobilized support for the restoration of democracy and recognition of MKO Abiola as winner of the June 12 presidential election. <laughs> On his return from exile, Mr. Tinubu joined the Alliance for Democracy under whose platform emerged as governor of Lagos State in two successive terms from 1999 to 2007. From that point, the Jagaban, as it's fondly called, has assumed the godfather position of Lagos politics, but sometimes criticized by his opponents as having overbearing influence on successive governors some of whom he's had a fallout with, while his influence stretches to the southwest region. Consistent in the opposition while raising political leaders across the southwest, Asiwaji Bola Tinubu and his associate had unsuccessfully attempted to win the presidential election. However, the polity assumed a new posture when the ACN, the CPC, NPP, ABGA, and the new PDP formed a merger now known as the All Progressives Congress to unseat an incumbent president in 2015. Further raising his political profile, a show of his political sagacity. So, Your Excellency, Mr. President. And ahead of the 2023 general election, speculations ensued on his possible ambition to succeed the president, stories he later confirmed after meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari. It's a categorical declaration. You've gotten that truth from me that I've informed the pre uh, Mr. President of my ambition. That disclosure sparked conversations, controversies and power play even in the APC, especially over issues of zoning and consensus candidates. Perhaps perceiving that things might not go his way, Mr. Tinubu drew the battle line with his now famous Abel Kota declaration. Mr. Tinubu's outbursts unsettled some members of his party as some supported him while others were apparently not pleased. After all the political intrigue, Asiwaju Bala Ahmed Tinubu emerged as presidential candidate of the APC after polling 1,271 votes, defeating the Vice President Professor Yamir Shibajo, Senate President Ahmed Lawan, and other aspirants at the party special convention. His long journey has also been checkered by controversies and the state of his health. However, and with the mandate of his party, there is more battle ahead for Asiwaju Bala Ahmed Tinubu as he faces other presidential candidates, including his long standing friend Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party. Jeffrey Uzongo, Channels Television News. In part two, after the break, Nigeria's president, Muhammadu Buhari, and also PDP presidential candidate uh, Atiku Bubaka congratulates his APC counterpart, Bola Tinubu, describes his emergence as a demonstration of his tenacity. Please stay with us. back if you just joined us you're watching the news at 10 live from channels television lagos a reminder of our top stories former governor of lagos state ashiwaju bola tinubu lays out his vision for nigeria as he clinches the all progressives congress presidential ticket with a resounding victory you'll also see the twists and turns and other intrigues that played out before bola tinubu's emergence as the apc flag bearer Ghanaian President Nana Kufuado challenges top elites in West Africa to support regional integration in the African continent.
Pakistan and U.S. politics. President Mohamed Buhari has congratulated Ashwadri Bola Ahmed Tunubu after his emergence as the APC presidential flag bearer of the party ahead of the 2023 elections. In a statement by his spokesman, the president says, now our party must unite behind our candidate to achieve victory at the 2023 elections so that our governments will continue to secure our communities, grow our economy and continue the fight against corruption. The statement adds that he strongly believes that Mr. Tinubu will safeguard and improve on this democratic achievement and legacy. He says he is the right candidate for Nigeria's aspiration because he is the APC's candidate and under the continued stewardship of the party, Nigeria can achieve greatness and fulfill its destiny in Africa and the world. The president calls for unity while reminding the party of the movement that was created in 2013, which he says is beyond individuals and should continue on that trajectory to guarantee victory at the polls. Congratulatory messages have been pouring in for the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress. Among the first to congratulate him is the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar. In a tweet, the former vice president said, Congratulations on your emergence as your party's presidential candidate. It has been a hard-fought contest, but that you prevailed confirms your tenacity. Also in his congratulatory message, the president of Senate, Ahmed Lawa, Set Tinubu's emergence has reassured the APC of winning the 2023 presidential poll. Mr. Lawan, who also described the party as manifestly free and the primary rather as manifestly free and fair, said the outcome shows that Mr. Tinubu is a popular choice. The chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum and Ekiti State Governor, Dr. Kaede Fayemi, also congratulated Mr. Tinubu, whom he stepped down for during the primary. In a statement by his chief press secretary, Dr. Fayemi, said his emergence represents the collective wish of the vast majority of the APC, adding that the former Lagos State Governor has proven his dedication and competence to lead the country at such an important time in history. Well, in the meantime, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, appears to be making a mockery of the APC flag bearer, Bola Tinubu. The PDP says the APC has since served out what it calls a fraudulent contraption that brought in the failed, corrupt and riddleless administration of President Buhari. This was contained in a statement signed by the PDP National Publicity Secretary, Honorable Debo Olugunagwa, in Abuja earlier today. And we're off to Abuja, where we have more stories from Terry Kumi, who is standing by. Terry? Well, hello, Millicent. Nice to see you again. Uh, let's go away from the APC now, where Mr. Malik Ado Ibrahim has emerged as the 2023 presidential candidate of the Young Progressives Party, YPP, after polling 66 votes to beat his rival, Ruby Isaac Chineye, at the party's presidential primary in Abuja. The party's presidential flag bearer promises to address the country's security challenges, create jobs and revamp the economy if elected. We did that. The ballroom of the Palms Hotel in Abuja is filled to capacity as members of the Young Progressives Party elect their presidential candidate for the 2023 general elections. I'm a very fast learner. 74 delegates have been accredited, but before the voting commences, the two contestants engage in a debate over how they intend to address specific challenges facing the country. Security requires that you, could, you have good intelligence. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, so one of my main games is to make sure that we get granular security from our traditional rulers that live amongst us, and that will give us a stronger nation and a more powerful security system. Nigerians are some of the most intelligent people on earth in every nation where they've been represented. So when we have a better nation building, we would, we, we would be able to attract our own coming home. the debate. 
debate over, it's time to elect a candidate for the party. And using the option A4 method, delegates file behind the candidate of their choice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. At the end of the exercise, Mr. Malik Ado Ibrahim emerges the winner after polling six to six votes out of the 70 votes cast. Nigeria, you've humbled me and I will show you that you can be a great nation among great nations once again with a leader that can excel. The leadership of the YPP is hoping to make a difference in the 2023 general elections. The history of YPP is a political party that presents to Nigerian the best. 2019 we did it and again we are repeating it again for 2023. The YPP prides itself as the political party for young people in Nigeria and is banking on the voting powers of this class of electorate in the 2023 general elections. The national chairman of Zenith Labour Party, Mr. Dan Wayanwu, has emerged as the presidential candidate of the party for the 2023 presidential election. At a special convention in Abuja, the party also changed its name from the Zenith Labour Party to Zenith Progressives Alliance. It notes that although the name of the party has been changed, all the identities remain pending when the necessary changes are effected by INEC. Meanwhile, all the parties, including the NNPP, also witnessed the emergence of their flag bearers. It is a day full of activities as delegates from across the country converged on Abuja to elect their presidential candidates who will represent them next year at the general elections. From the Zenith Labour Party ZLP to the new Nigeria's People's Party NNPP and a faction of Labour Party, these presidential hopefuls share their plans on how to improve the welfare of Nigerians. Addressing the 185 delegates and members of the party national executive, Zenith Labour presidential candidate promises to unite all sections of the country. I will make sure that this lack of trust, nobody trusts his brother, will take steps to return Nigeria to where it was. We make use of the traditional institutions. We give them the role they are supposed to play. At the new Nigeria's People's Party, a former governor of Kano State, Rabbi Kwankwaso, emerged as the party's flag bearer. The crisis working Labour Party, however, appears to be festering as a faction of the party led by Mr. Kalisto Sokafo held its national convention to elect Ambassador Jude Ezenwanfo as its presidential flag bearer. What I we're doing here today is to elect is to call, collect a man who is worthy to give us that change we'll be yearning for. In his acceptance speech, the presidential candidate of the Kalistus Mwafo led faction pledges to rescue Nigeria. I am never, I've never been in the wrong place. Labour Party forward ever. Labour Party forward ever. Labour Party forward ever. I'm going for a rescue mission. With the deadline set by the Independent National Electoral Commission for the election of presidential candidates, the Labour Party appears divided on who will be the party's flag bearer, as Mr. Peter Obi remains the candidate of the Independent National Electoral Commission recognized Julia Abure led faction. The African Democratic Congress has begun the process of picking its presidential candidate ahead of the 2023 presidential election. Ten of the 12 aspirants are present at a convention and are slugging it out in the party's national convention and presidential primary holding in Abiyokuta, Ogun State. Five of the aspirants are women. The election is underway and will be concluded so as to meet up with a deadline of submission of candidates to the I to INEC on Thursday, June 9, 2022. Still ahead on the news at 10, crude oil prices jump to 13-week high as U.S. demand for gasoline continues to rise. But on Business News, join us again. Welcome back 
to the news at 10, we're still talking politics. As all the parties are just electing their flag bearers, the People's Democratic Party Governors Forum says it is consulting to select a running mate for its presidential candidate, al Haji Atiku Abubakar. Chairman of the forum, Governor Minu Tambuwal of Sokoto State, stated this shortly after a meeting with Mr. Tiku in Abuja. A correspondent, Emperor Simon, reports. This is the first time Mr. Atiku Abubakar will be meeting with the PDP Governors Forum after his emergence as the party's flag bearer for the 2023 presidential election. Twelve governors, including his core contenders at the primary, Governor Yesim Wiki of River State, Governor Bala Mohammed of Boucher State, and Governor Udom Emmanuel of Aquaibum State, are attending the meeting, which was held behind closed doors. The PDP National Chairman, Senator Yocha Ayu, is also in attendance. After about two hours, the meeting ends and Governor Minu Tambual of Sokoto State briefs journalists on the outcome. We have discussed about cooperation, collaboration, and prosecuting a very, very successful electioneering campaign that will result into victories for the PDP at various elections from State Houses of Assembly National Assembly, governorship, and the presidential election uh, come February 2023. So it's more of a consultative meeting on the matters uh, concerning uh, the way forward. Is the issue of uh, running mate discussed at the meeting? It's part of the consultation, it's ongoing, and governors are being consulted also on that. Meanwhile, Mr. Atiku Abubakar receives Governor Yensim Wiki of River State, Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State, Governor Ifai Ugwanyi of Enugu State, and Governor Shea Makinde of Oyo State at his residence in Abuja. He also meets with Governor Bala Mohammed of Boucher State, who appeals to him to put behind all their differences and forge a common front for the success of the party. Political disagreements and differences are normal in a political party. But at the end of the day, after all the disagreements, after all the fights, we should sit down and make sure that our party wins uh, at all levels. These consultations by Mr. Atiku Abubakar with the PDP governors is aimed at strengthening the bond of unity in the party and ensuring its success in the 2023 general elections. Emperor Simon, Channels Television News. Well, that's all from the nation's capital. Back to you, Millicent. Thank you, Terry. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says its operatives were attacked by thugs while attempting to arrest the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in River State, Simina Lai Fubara. The incident occurred last night at the Port Harcourt International Airport in River State as Mr. Fubara and other PDP chief chains who accompanied him to Abuja to receive his certificate of return touched down at the airport. The commission, in a statement by its spokesman, Mr. Wilson Uwujare, says, thugs breached the security of the airport, preventing its operatives from effecting the arrest of the PDP candidate. The EFCC had declared Mr. Fubara, who is uh, the immediate past accountant general of River State and three other top government officials, wanted over alleged 117 billion naira fraud. Nigeria, Ghana and other West African countries should pull together to advance growth on the African continent. This formed the thrust of the speech of Ghanaian President Nana Kufuado at the Metropolitan Club in Lagos. President Akufuado also criticized some constitutional regime change across Africa. Our correspondent Illumide Macaulay reports. It's a sunny day in the city of Lagos. And inside the Metropolitan Club, a cooler ambience lends to a warm reception of the Goodfellas, the members, a who's who of high society. A gallery of Metropolitan Club presidents of yore, living and dearly departed, look down as though to give a nod of approval. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To the arrival of the president of Ghana, Nana Kufo Ado. Pleasantries exchanged and the high table ascended. The stage is set. Ghana leads that thought of African Renaissance 
it wasn't Ghana Renaissance, it was African Renaissance. And Your Excellency, till today, that church is still alive. I recall in my primary school days, in the 40s, the leading role which the Gold Coast played in the 40s and 50s in liberation of Africa. Now the moment they've all been waiting for, the President of Ghana, who emphasizes the importance of partnership between both countries. It has given us a good sense of how important it is to strengthen our unity and solidarity and has intensified in us the motivation, if any was needed, to be self-reliant. He also strikes a salient chord on regime change in West Africa and security in the sub-region. Unconstitutional regime changes retard the growth of countries. As much as the drivers are largely do domestic, the international dimension can also not be overlooked. Foreign involvement in fomenting unconstitutional changes, often in favor of repressive governments, foreign economic interests, and other would-be geopolitical benefits are also contributory factors. However, the reality is that these sanctions have not been applied uniformly. Whilst we are quick to sanction military coup leaders, Civilians who achieve several similar ends via the manipulation of constitutions to remain in power, for example, go without sanction. A toast and photo ops bring the luncheon to a close, and without further aplomb, the president of Ghana takes his leave. Promoting good bilateral relations between Nigeria and Ghana is important for the collective growth of sub-Saharan Africa. A posture that the President of Ghana, Anna Akufo-Addo, has not been shy to enunciate. Reporting from Lagos, Olumide Mokoli, Channels Television News. It's now time for some business news. Here's Anne Mwalder. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Millicent. Let's start tonight with oil prices. They rose about 2% to a 13-week high today, and U.S. demand for gasoline keeps rising. The increase in oil prices is on the back of expectations that China's oil demand will rise and on supply concerns in several countries around the world. Brent's futures rose 2.65% to $123.77 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude rose 2.64% to $122.77. 65 cents a barrel. In terms of supply, the UAE's energy minister says the efforts by OPEC Plus to boost output are not encouraging and the oil cartel is currently 2.6 million barrels per day short of its target. Meanwhile, the International Energy Agency has warned that Europe, which has sanctioned Russia following its invasion of Ukraine, could face energy shortages next winter. The Nigeria Export Processing Zones Authority, NEPSA, and the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, have signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Effective Tax Administration in Free Trade Zones. According to the FIRS Chairman, Mr. Mohamed Nami, the agreement will foster greater collaboration between both agencies. On his part, the Managing Director of NEPSA, Adesoji Adeshuba, says that the MOU is aimed at strengthening tax compliance in order to grow the country's economy. Economy. And some company news now. Access Bank PLC says that it has agreed to acquire 83.4% equity stake on Centum Investment PLC, and that's a Kenyan based investment company, the Sadian Bank Limited, for about 15 billion naira. In a statement sent to the Nigerian exchange, the bank says the company will be merged with Access Bank subsidiary in Kenya to help create a stronger banking institution. According to Access Bank's group chief executive, Mr. Herbert Wigwe, 
The acquisition of CDN is a significant step to upscale the potential for the bank in Kenya, which represents the largest market and trade corridor in the East Western Africa. So the equities market now, it recorded its first negative close. So the color is red today for this week and the trading session. Any John Mikwa has the details for us. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Stock Market Reports. The market took a negative turn today, a dip for the very first time this week, as the All Share Index shed 0.14% and reduced the market value by 41 billion naira. And now the bear is back. <laughs> Well, a mixed activity chart as the value for the day was over 32% lower compared to yesterday. It stood at 1.86 billion naira. Looking at the sectors now, banking took a default, a short-lived recovery we see there. The drop in the share prices of Fidelity Bank, IBN Holding, UB and Access Co. They are responsible for that fall in that counter. All the counters perform fairly well. That's referring to consumers' goods and industrial goods. Now looking at the top trades list is made up of a mixture of agriculture represented by Presco conglomerates which is where Transco falls in and financial services which has FBN holding. FBN holding has reclaimed its spot on that list. Well analysts were hoping for a longer bull run but maybe that will return tomorrow if bargain hunting tops priority of investors. That's a stock market report. I'm Ini John Mekwa. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of the news at 10 continues now with Millicent. Banking so easy, so simple. Dial star 894 hash now to experience it. You first, first bank. Thank you, Anne. Italy is warning that millions of people could die of hunger unless Russia unblocked Ukraine's ports. This was during talks among Mediterranean ministers on the food crisis. Ships loaded with grain remain blocked in Ukraine, which before Russia's February invasion was considered a global breadbasket as a leading exporter of corn, wheat and sunflower seeds. Simon Pusey has more international news in around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Italy is now warning that millions of people could die of hunger unless Russia frees up Ukraine's ports on the Black Sea. Non si può pensare. Foreign Minister Luigi Di Maio added that the next few weeks would be crucial. His words are the latest reflection of international worry caused by Ukraine's inability to export food at the normal rate. However, Russian's foreign secretary says Russia has already done its bit by making the necessary commitments so that ships can sail safely. Sergei Lavrov was speaking at a press conference in Ankara following talks on the topic with his Turkish counterpart. Ukraine's prosecutor general says she has filed eight more war crimes cases to court on top of the three lengthy sentences already handed down to Russian troops. Irina Venetikova says Ukraine is investigating more than 16,000 potential war crimes committed by Russia. Moscow still denies its troops have targeted civilians or committed any war crimes since its so-called special military operation began. One person has been killed and at least a dozen more injured after a car drove into a crowd on a busy Berlin street. Emergency officials say it is unclear whether the incident, which happened at around 10.30 local time, was intentional or an accident. A police spokesperson told reporters that the driver was arrested at the scene while around 130 emergency workers are attending. The actor John Barrowman witnessed the incident and describes what he saw. It's really pretty bad, guys. Um, there's over where we are here, there's uh, a lot of police. There's a dead body in the middle of the road. And then over here, there is uh, all of the um, emergency services that are uh, trying to help victims and people. There's a lot of people walking uh, with limps and injuries. Uh, the, if I'm pointing to you uh, from the road up there, the car came down onto the pavement. We had dinner in that restaurant last night. 
the car came down onto the pavement, then has come onto the road over there, has hit somebody, then has gone down the road and come back onto the pavement down that, down that way, and come back onto the pavement and gone through a bunch of people, gone through the photograph that I posted uh, of a, a cafe and then right into a storefront window. A Thai court has jailed six police officers for life for torturing and killing a drug suspect during interrogation. CCTV shows the now deceased man being seated before a bag is placed around his head. Among the six to be sentenced was an influential police colonel famously nicknamed Joe Ferrari for his collection of luxury sports cars. The judge at Bangkok's Central Criminal Court for Corruption and Misconduct Cases initially sentenced the six officers to death, but commuted that to life imprisonment for their cooperation and attempts to revive the suspect. King Philippe of Belgium has handed over to the Democratic Republic of Congo the first of some 84,000 artifacts looted during the colonial era that Belgium has agreed to return. There was applause as the mask, called Kakungu, was unveiled. It was previously exhibited at Belgium's Royal Museum for Central Africa. King Philippe and Queen Matilda are on a visit to the Democratic Republic of Congo at the invitation of the president. Belgium's colonial record in Congo was one of the most brutal in Africa. The newly returned mask was used during healing ceremonies by the Suku community from the southwest of the country. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. And now for some sports news, here's Ayotunde Balogun. Many thanks, Millicent. The Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Mr. Sonde Dara, has charged the new head coach of the Super Eagles, Jose Passero, to make the squad a string force or a strong force on the African continent. Officials of the Nigeria Football Federation earlier today officially presented the coach to the sports minister at his office in Abuja. He promised Coach Passero that the ministry will assist in the rebuilding process by providing a conducive environment for the Portuguese tactician to restore the confidence of football love in Nigerians and the government in the Super Eagles. For us as a nation, the NFF as a ministry, the message we want to deliver to the new coach emphatically is that this is the start of a rebuilding process. Nigerians are a football-loving people, a football-loving nation. They love the Super Eagles, most especially and love to win every game, even though we know it's not possible. I know the quality of the players, I know everything. Uh, only I, have, I come here for one, one goal. I, I want to win the next, next AFCON. Meanwhile, the Super Eagles keeper Ahmed Musa says there will be no cause for alarm when they face Sierra Leone in tomorrow's 2023 African Nations Cup qualifier at the MQ Abiola Stadium without home fans. Our Thursday situation is a consequence of the one-match ban placed on the country by the World Football Governing Body, FIFA, over the fracas that followed the end of the 2022 FIFA World Cup playoff round against the Black Stars of Ghana in the month of March. For the empty stadium, we are, we, are, we, are, we are used to that because doing goal we play almost one and a half year with the league without the fans. So that is not a new thing. That is what we have to pay for because we did what we are paying for. So it's left for us to go into the pitch to pay for what we need. Because even though with the empty stadium, we have to give our fans to win their, their confidence back. So definitely we have to do all our best to win that game tomorrow. Well, the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has directed that all athletes be tested before they leave for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next month. This is in a bid to avoid a repeat of the doping scandal that rocked Team Nigeria's campaign at last year's Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan. The ministry warned that it will not hesitate to drop and punish any athlete who fails dope tests. And that's Sports News. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. It's back to you, Millicent. My thanks, Ayo Tunde. And the main news again. 
its mission accomplished for the APC flag bearer, Bola Tinubu, as he recorded a resounding victory at the Eagle Square. In his acceptance speech, he promised to lift the country out of the woods, and it was an outpour of congratulations from President Buhari, a PDP flag bearer, Atiku Abubakar, and chairman of the Governor's Forum, Dr. Kaede Faimi, to name a few. Also today, we brought you uh, a report that the flag bearer in his acceptance speech also said the country has what it takes to achieve its finest destiny. And Guinean President Nana Kufuado has challenged top elites in West Africa to support regional integration on the African continent. And Italy has warned that millions of people could die of hunger. This is unless Russia freed up Ukraine's ports. And this is on the Black Sea. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Walker. Have a good night.